Now this contraption is the working core of an IBM 9121 central processing unit which is a box about the size of a large two-door fridge. I believe it's from a 9121 model 320 which is part of the system 390 or ES9000 series manufactured in 1991. It consists of two thermal conduction modules or TCMs as they're called which are down there. Heavy base plate with two very large heat sinks. Now this PDF about the 9121 processor and I'll put a link to it down below has a view of the cabinet with the covers removed and you can see that there are one, two, three of those base plates with one, two, one, two modules on the left two and the right one appears to have only a single module and it's, and it's heat sink. Now the system I got mine out of I'm pretty sure only had one base plate and therefore just the two TCMs otherwise I would have grabbed the others I'm pretty sure. Uh, I believe it was a model 320 so this is a, um, a higher level module a model than the, the one I had. So that's, that's how these things look when they're at home. The whole assembly weighs about 22 kilograms and just the heat sink weighs 5 kilograms and I've taken this one off years ago uh, the other one is as, still as manufactured by IBM um, I'm about to sell that to a collector in Europe so I've got to find a way of remember how I got these off this Allen keys, Allen screws deep inside the these holes and they're very hard to reach with a normal Allen key but uh, I did it before and I'll do it again if we take off the TCM just this weighs 2.2 kilograms and we see there are 2,772 gold pins and we can go a bit further and take the lid off it all right, I've loosened all these cap screws and we'll try lifting this off now there's a number of little spring loaded pistons in here and I'm not sure plus a whole lot of oily goop I'm not sure um, how this is going to come off but uh, th these modules can dissipate when the fan forced cooling is in operation it can dissipate 600 watts per module ok let's lift this off oh, there we go little springs in every one of those holes and little copper pistons which are going to be a bugger to get back uh, there's one piston per each of those little chips there can be up to 121 chips and each chip can dissipate up to 10 watts not all this at the same time obviously the small chips are decoupling capacitors and there's a lot of them too. Uh, there can be yeah, 11 by 11 so 121 chips maximum. Obviously some aren't used in this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 aren't being used in this module. They're mounted on a ceramic substrate which consists of 63 layers bonded together. Now this in all that substrate there can be up to 400 meters of wiring and up to 2 million wires wire holes to connect uh, to connect all that wiring together so it's uh, 
pretty amazing technology. This goop is some polyolefin, poly alpha olefin, an inert oil that uh, maintains its viscosity at varying temperatures. So I probably should have lifted that up the other way. So we'll see how I go trying to fit all these back in. Bugger. Oh, I've got it around the wrong way. I think I'm going to have to individually replace all of those pins back into these slots. Oh well, yes I am. So, there we have it. 9121 thermal conduction module. Okay, I've moved the pistons, transferred all the pistons across. And now I'll show you the way I should have disassembled this. So after removing the screws, all the cap screws from the bottom, turn it over so that the pins are facing upwards, and then remove the module, the top of the module. Notice how that comes away from the ceramic substrate. It may not always. And if it lifts, it then the ceramic may then drop. So best to make sure the ceramic stays down while you lift that off and then it's all a bit sticky because of the oil but if I give it a slight twist it should come free not nope, still drop piston so well can't be helped but at least um, I don't have to move <laughs> I don't have to transplant all 121 Another tip for young players, if you ever find yourself putting these pistons back in the hole, instead of trying to work out where not to put them by the vacant sites on the ceramic, you should notice that there's a spring only in the holes where a piston goes. Because if you put one where there's in the wrong hole, where there's no spring, like that one there, uh, you'll never get the bugger out again. I've tried Blue tack, chewing gum, <laughs> super glue, hot milk glue. I can't can't get the thing out. There's a little slot as well um, down the side. You can see on. I tried to pry it out with a needle in that slot, but no luck. And also, see how the pistons have a little indent that obviously goes on the non-chip side one other thing uh, these modules can apparently be populated with a mixture of bipolar and CMOS chips I don't know if that's what these metal ones with metalized back indicates maybe they're just a different sort of chip that needs better cooling or something uh, we'll put it all back together now there's a piston missing that one that's in the wrong hole will fill one of them but where's the other piston oh I stuck another one in ah oh, shit I've done it again Oh, lucky that one didn't quite sink to the bottom so I could get it out. Trap for young players. Okay, goes around this way. The last thing to look at is this uh, base plate. It's got a whole bunch of connectors, a lot of wires. And some blank ones. And connectors go here as well. And on the back.
<laughs> just a steel cover and backs of TCMs, a few bodge wires or maybe they're not bodge wires, maybe they're intended to be there just only a few of them and look how thick that, that printed circuit board is is about a five millimetre thick so I imagine there's a quite a few layers there So, the IBM 9121 thermal conduction module system as used in ES9000 mainframes. Now that has got to be all you need to know about these things. Catch you later.